Hi everyone, welcome to Better Creating. This is the third in my series on how to film on your phone, uh, my solo mobile filmmaking series. Today I'm going to take you through 10 simple hacks to get great dynamic buttery b-roll footage out of your mobile setup. Uh, it just involves a couple of kitchen hacks, a tea towel and some clever editing. You can make it look like someone else is filming you with really great kit. Let's do it. Well, welcome to Better Creating. Uh, my name's Simon. Uh, this is a channel to help simplify creative life. So I'm trying to help creative people like you, and that includes me in the process, to live more simplified, intentional lives and create more meaningful and great quality content, uh, whatever the art form is that you're into. If that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already uh, and make sure you get involved with the Better Creating community. It just means that you know my videos come up in your feed and it's free, so do it. If you haven't seen them yet, the last two videos in this series, the first one explored great budget gear to get the most out of your mobile and turn it into a proper filming setup. And the second episode is all about using Filmic Pro and a couple of tricks to turn your mobile into a fully adjustable DSLR camera. It's the camera basics tutorial, all about shutter speed, ISO, frame rate, resolution, all of those great things. So make sure you check those out if you haven't. We're going to get on with these 10 hacks to get great content out of your mobile. Before we do anything, check this little B-roll out and then we're gonna talk about the little tricks that we used to create it. There we go, one of the first things I made with a mobile when I started to explore filming. Number one, and it might seem extremely obvious, but film with the camera on the back of your mobile, not the one where you can see yourself. Uh, you'll get a much better quality image. How you move. You may not be aware of this, but I spend quite a lot of time uh, being a movement director uh, and I kind of you know, help people move. That's been actually incredibly useful thinking about how to film. Keep it simple, smooth, gentle, steady moves will be much easier to edit than loads of throwing things around to start with. A great way to think about your movement is, is move from your center and move from your legs. If you're moving with your hands, there's a lot less stability. Whereas actually, if I move with my body, and actually lock my arms off, it's gonna make a huge difference to the quality of the movement. Sorry about that, I got carried away. Controlling a camera, think about three points of contact. It's always really useful. Okay, if I've got my camera in two hands and then I've got a strap around my neck, that's three points of contact. So the uh, the camera strap or any piece of, you know, like a bungee on, onto a rig for your mobile, that will give you that stability and it will give you a much more stable and controlled piece of footage. So uh, three points of contact where you can. If you want that really nice smooth footage, consider filming in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, something like that, so that when you slow it back down, you're gonna get that nice smooth movement. It will take out any of those kind of micro jitters or extra movements that you didn't wanna put in. Just remember, when you're filming, don't do that in slow motion. Do the footage at a pace that feels right to you, natural, you can whip in and whip out. When you slow it back down, it will just be a lot smoother. I picked this one up from watching Peter McKinnon, and actually, to be honest, I've put it in too many productions over the years. It's called The Forward Fall. It's quite good as a piece of choreography, but it's also very useful as a camera technique. If you fall towards or away from an object, there's a kind of perfect little period in the middle, as Peter talks about, which is where you've got a really smooth um, bit of panning. It looks a little bit like this. That's a pretty cool little trick. We should have a quick coffee break.
storyboard. Something like that. Even though it's the simple process of making coffee, it really helps to have a little bit of a plan as of a process of these are the shots and the order I want to get so that you know how you're going to put it together and how that will flow and how you can cut between each shot. Want to get those buttery, smooth, kind of gimbal-like movements but don't have a gimbal? Use a tea towel. Place it on a surface, put your phone on it, slide the tea towel, smooth, gimbal-like footage. Easy. Pan and move in straight lines. So towards or away from your subject is a really lovely way to cut to, or moving across the screen rather than turning your camera is gonna get you nice planes and much easier to edit together. Also, if you're panning, if you're moving across the screen, consider all your footage going in the same direction. Um, it will really help give that sense of traveling into the video. Um, so the way that you edit that, consider how each one will fit together and the directions that you're panning. Now the other thing of course is if you're filming yourself, it's really hard to do that and create good movement because you're in the shot, right? Create movement in the edit with keyframing. Film a little bit wider, film at high resolution, put it on a tripod or place it on a static position, do what you need to do in front of the camera, and then in post-production you can actually create pans and zooms and movement using keyframing. Here's a little example in LumaFusion, what I use on a mobile device to edit my videos. If you want to know more about LumaFusion, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. But here's some keyframing. So, in I go, find my projects up the top. There's all the rushes for this video. And down there, I've got a little clip from my coffee video. I'm going to find it, find a spot in it. I'm moving that bar around to find the bit I want. Good, that looks about right. Yeah, that looks nice. I'm going to drop that down into the bar. There it is on my timeline, easy job. Double click on the footage and you'll see bottom left it says frame and fit. So that means I can change and there's like different things down there uh, like audio and so on. I want frame and fit. Click on that. Make it a bit too big as I say. Find a position and I want it to pan I want it to pan this way. So I'm going to drop it down for the start position and I click a little plus down the bottom, add a keyframe at the beginning of the clip. That's a marker for where it sits. I go to the other end of the five second clip I've chosen, put a second marker and then I just move it using that uh, for a pan of the X uh, axis. It doesn't need to be too much. I want it to be a slow pan over five seconds. That's the distance it will travel between those two points. Let's have a look at it. And there it is, a pan using keyframes. Easy. Now, let's just jump forward. What if I want to do a zoom? Same thing, marker at the start, marker at the end, make the end one bigger, set it. When I play that back, I've got a zoom. Loads more on LumaFusion coming up in a future video. Come on then, let's finish these hacks. So how can you get those great top-down shots? If you don't have a, a tripod that does it, consider a microphone stand. That's what I've used quite a bit. They're not that expensive, but what's great is they've got that long boom arm and you can kind of stick them out and get them over your subject. Well, here's a really silly but quite cool trick to get top-down shots. You know these like cheap um, tripods? I think it was like 12 quid, something like that, you know, $10. Grab yourself a metal tray They're often magnetic. I can then hang the uh, um, camera off the end here, weight this end, put it on a surface, and then I've got a boom arm, essentially. Any bit of metal and that, great. Bonus. Create some depth. Use one of these or something similar, a cheap, simple, uh, little kind of portable light. This is an aperture. Um, I review this and, well, talk about this in the first video. I can place this kind of anywhere, uh, but creating depth is about that, really you can see the effect. Um, it's to create a, uh, um, a separation between the subject and the background. And so what is often known as a hair light, or backlight, whatever you want to call it, uh, will help create that effect. Um, so whether that's a coffee cup or a person, uh, it's a really useful thing to create interesting lighting around what it is you're filming. Coming up in the series, I'll be showing you how to edit uh, simple and effective takes using LumaFusion, a mobile device to edit your content. Um, and we'll talk a little bit maybe about lighting. 
uh, I've recently acquired a lighting setup uh, for a freelance project and uh, it's great now that I can actually um, experiment with these in the home. So uh, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about how to light a great shot in another video. Well, thanks for joining me. I hope you found that useful. Make sure you check out the other videos in the series and the other content on better creating. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stay connected. It's free. It just means my videos pop up in your feed. And, uh, you know, if you enjoyed this video, if you found value from it, please hit the like button, comment, let me know what else you'd like to see and what you found useful. It all helps to stay connected and grow the channel. And thank you so much for uh, watching the video. Uh, look, I'll see you in another one, I hope. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go and film some stuff with my little light, I guess. All right. Bye.